June 2011 to 2012, there are over 2,100 reported cases of sexually transmitted infections in Grenada. At the end of 2012, there were a total of 485 reported cases of HIV in Grenada. We have been focusing a lot on HIV, um, and we probably need to, and we've been saying to ourselves that this year certainly we need to focus more on STIs, or at least certainly both of them, not one at the expense of the other. Um, but also people's behavior have been changing. I think that uh, the male or the man should be responsible for carrying a condom. Why would you say that? Because I think that the male or the man is supposed to be the responsible party. I find both partners because in case a man do bring one, the woman can always have shield and it's even better to protect them from HIV and AIDS. I think that every individual is responsible for carrying a condom. Why? Because I think every individual is responsible for their own lives. We find that the women seem to be a little docile when it comes to that. And so our focus is to talk to the men, get them understanding the risks and their responsibility as men in the relationship to make sure that they protect themselves and their partners. It seems to me as though culture is what really determines who wear use condoms. There was a time in our history when, you know, as a boy, the, the, the thought was that it was only men that were supposed to be, have that responsibility. But as it turns out, when I traveled during my study, it was the first time I actually met a lady who actually carried a condom. And I was like, really? Seriously? I was, I was actually taken aback at this. But now I can say, because I'm now older and wiser, I can firmly say that the responsibility falls to both parties. If it's not with your personal girlfriend, then you have to use a condom all the time because there are STDs out there. If you know you have more than one, you have more than one partner, I believe that you should carry it all the time. If not, and you're in a stable, honest relationship that you you know you know the post, the status of the person as well as your own status, then it's based on your personal preference. If you are married and you trust your partner, <laughs> I mean, I'm smiling, but it is a tricky situation then you may have the preference of sometimes not using a condom but in other cases where you're in an open relationship for want of a better phrase uh, I think it's your responsibility to be responsible for yourself every time you go at it. If two persons are in an intimate relationship and both partners are HIV positive then both partners still need to use protection because what happens is even if you're infected with HIV um, the virus can change within your system and there are also different strains of the virus. So both partners may have different strains of the virus and if, if um, you continue having unprotected sex um, with a positive partner then you can become reinfected or sometimes it's called super infection. Which, so you can actually be, be infected with more than one strain of the virus at the same time which will um, accelerate the progress of the of HIV in your system. You still have to take into consideration the risk and the exposure with your partner who you're in the current relationship with, you know, and um, it's, it's never advisable. We always advise that you use a condom all the time. I believe that you should limit the amount of partners that you have. I cannot go out and say, you know, you should stick to one person, but you know, when you're looking at HIV, AIDS, and all these tra sexually transmitted diseases, I recommend having one sexual partner. Persons who have multiple partners, the life, the life is like at risk because you never know which one have that, you know, sexual transmitted diseases disease when you have multiple partners and I know is a person where you like sex and your partner likes sex your multiple partners like sex I think you should always be taking regular checkups blood tests all them all them checkups 
persons having multiple partners, this is one of the mechanisms in which HIV AIDS can be spread. Um, it's somewhat, somewhat of a domino effect because you never know who the person, the multiple partners you have, who they're sleeping with. So I would say persons that have multiple partners would want to wrap it up each time they're having sexual intercourse. The sexually transmitted diseases are out there. HIV is just one of them. But the other STIs is just as important and in some cases probably more important than the HIV. I mean, let's talk about HTLV-1, for example. So many Grenadians have HTLV-1 and not, not a, many of us know that we have HTLV-1. Um, I am aware also that some of the other STIs are increasing. Gonorrhea is increasing, syphilis is increasing. These things are actually increasing. And so increasing your, your sex uh, uh, partners increases your risk of having all these kind of things. And what's worse is Many of those STIs, when you get it once, it stays with you for the rest of your life. I don't think people seriously sit back and think about the consequence of this kind of thing. If you have one partner, then you have the history of that one partner. If you have multiple partners, then you have the history of the multiple partners coming in to the relationship. So exposing yourself to, to multiple persons at any point in time increases your risk. And so we normally advise persons that the best route would be to stick to one monogamous relationship, which means that you are faithful to that partner and your partner is faithful to you. And obviously we recommend that you do your testing involved in relationships so that you know both of your statuses at the same time. We should use condoms every time we have sex and if we know that we're not faithful, we should go together and have an HIV test, like maybe every six months or so. Use a condom all the time or we could both do a test and after that remain in a committed relationship, don't go outside the relationship. We can start by having periodic HIV tests, we can start by using condom each time, we can start opening the window for trust and communication and we can start by educating ourselves on the dangers and what it really means to um, have HIV and AIDS. We can go get tested together, I mean that's the most obvious reason I could think of now and you know periodically do routine checks to make sure that we are what we think we, we have been and is. Once you educate yourself and you realize that you know with consistent use of, of condoms um, and you prevent the um, the sharing of body fluids and so on, as with any other person engaged in a relationship, then once you use those precautions consistently, then you will protect yourself. If I find out my friend or partner or somebody close to me is gay, I'll be in shock. <laughs> well, <laughs> personally, I'm not somebody to, you know, accept gay friends so I would like try to help them change if they don't want to change I'll stay far from them if I found out that one of my friends are gay I'll be shocked maybe try talking to them or talk them out of it but if that won't work well I have to cope with it my reaction will be normal because that is what he chooses to do to us here yeah, to we in Grenada we have a thing for gay people that we don't like at all and we, we, don't support, we don't support gay. That is wrong, very wrong to us. I don't agree with it, but it would not affect the way in which I relate to that person. My reaction would be the same towards that person because everybody, everybody is different and I may not know why they choose to go down that lifestyle, but I'll support them. Uh, maybe not everything I would agree with, but I'll still be a friend of mine. In terms of being gay, bisexual, lesbian in Grenada, we are faced with a number of issues. One is of uh, a moral discourse where persons have learned that in Grenada it is something that is questionable and so there are the legal aspects uh, when it comes to um, gays and gay rights and so. Um, but in Grenada more and more what we are encouraging persons is to be a little more tolerant and respectful. From a clinic point of view, we don't see many uh, same-sex couples. 
we know there are, um, but because of the societal um, taboos and so on, they wouldn't, they wouldn't come as a couple. And sometimes even when they come, they don't willingly um, volunteer information that they are never, yes. So, well, I think it's because, again, of the taboo, because they figure um, it's not a norm. Um, and maybe from their own experience or experience of others, they feel um, really reluctant to, to, um, to come out, disclose. I will have the person as a friend, but not a sexual partner, because not, they, not, they are a normal person, just as me. But I, knowing they have, they have HIV, I wouldn't take the risk and have sex with the person. I would not, and uh, my reasons would be because later on I might want to have children in the future and I wouldn't want to put my child at risk of being HIV positive. If I met the person and first and I understood that they were HIV positive before possibly falling in love, you know, I may be hinder to actually go deep in a relationship. There's nothing about discrimination, but you always want the best for yourself. Now, finding that person falling in love and after realizing the age of positive, that's a different route I will take. Now, I may actually decide to continue a relationship with this person based on how far the um, HIV has reached with that person. Initially, if you meet them knowing, um, then that's a different consideration. But if in the relationship you find out that, hey, that person is HIV, HIV positive, then you would have questions and have doubts that they were, uh, are being faithful. But in, if it's at the beginning, then that's a different situation because you have to understand the personality you're dealing with. And once you find a beautiful personality, there stands the possibility of finding love. So Yes, I will have a relationship with somebody who's HIV positive. I had a friend who was HIV positive and Somebody who is HIV positive though means that they have AIDS or you need to discriminate or you know exclude them from your you know your social circle. You think I think you need to support anybody who is HIV positive or who is you know have AIDS or because discrimination is not a nice thing. Many times it's the positive partner that is more afraid to have to, to have intimate relationships in um, in, a, in a situation like that because of the fear of infecting their partner. Um, but for the negative partner as well, there's some risk as well that is associated. But once you educate yourself and you realize that, you know, with consistent use of, of condoms um, and you prevent the, um, the sharing of body fluids and so on, as with any other person engaged in a relationship, then once you use those precautions, consistently, then you will protect yourself. Well, I would try to open that person's mindset, because sometimes you think it's the end of the road, it's not persons live healthy, normal life with treatment, uh, with information, so I will try to ensure that those are provided to them. Try to treat them as normal as what I treat all my other friends. Well, the most I can do is encourage that person, you know, to develop a better understanding of the HIV virus, how it functions, you know, what they need to do to protect them, to maintain a healthy lifestyle. All we can do as individuals is help to keep them motivated because it's not an easy task to deal with something like that. It's, it's a great load. So from my end, I would try my best to, you know, motivate them, always encourage them, and letting them know that it, it's not the end, life continues after HIV. Government as well as society have to come together and find a way, a sort of a multi-sectorial approach as we call it, to deal with issues not just of chronic disease, but of sexually transmitted diseases as well. So it means that government has a responsibility in terms of legislation, putting policies in place, monitoring and evaluating the programs that they've put in place. But also, civic organizations, churches need to get on board to understand that you need to get up to speed with what's really happening. Community groups need to get on, on board, educating the young persons who would rather choose to go play football than to go to the church. Community groups need to get involved. Education needs to get involved. When it comes of educating the youths and children regarding safe life practices and so on, these need to get in, in, involved as well. To some extent, we need to go back to basic. We have to continue what we're doing, but we've got to kind of backtrack a bit. 
um, see where we're going wrong, where we're missing people. Um, not just, when I say we, I don't just mean us in the Ministry of Health, although we have a real important um, role that nobody else has, nobody can take our role. But we need to work in partnership with other people. Parents have a great role to play, other stakeholders like yourself and so on. So we need to work together, but we need to backtrack a bit to see where, we've gone, where, where we might be going wrong. Because obviously there are some people who are, are not coming forward um, for maybe because of um, fear, because of stigma, also because of um, the whole taboo thing, the behavior might not be accepted and so on. So we have to reach out, find ways, creative ways to reach out. We have not been focusing on empowering even the children at school in terms of how to make decisions properly. So yes, they have the information. Yes, they know, um, young people know when they expose themselves to certain behaviors and so that they are at risk. But we have not focused enough on the behavioral part of it. How do you behave when you're faced with something? And I think that is what we need to focus more on.